The ingestion of the widely used artificial sweetener called aspartame, better known as NutraSweet or Equal, may just be responsible for what the authors say is a dramatic increase in the number of people who develop brain tumors. Consumer advocates and researchers have become more vocal about what they say may be aspartame's adverse effects. They are asking the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, to take another hard look at aspartame. We're talking about a compound that millions of people are consuming on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Children are a particular concern, and of course pregnant women are of special concern. Dr. Deborah Davis is a leading epidemiologist who serves on the faculty of the Strang Cornell Cancer Prevention Center. She's published widely on the environmental causes of brain cancer. Is brain cancer mortality increasing in industrial countries? Without any question, it is. Why? We don't know why. I mean, that's the thing that we've been very concerned about. There are multiple factors we have to look at, but one of them may be, for some people, uh, increased consumption of aspartame. Better known by its brand names NutraSweet or Equal, aspartame is the most popular sugar substitute in the world. Since the FDA approved it back in 1981, it has become a multi-billion dollar industry. What most consumers don't know is that aspartame's approval was one of the most contested in FDA history. Consumers have reported more than 7,000 adverse reactions to the FDA, ranging from dizziness to headaches to seizures. But the makers say it is the most tested food additive ever and is safe for the tens of millions who use it worldwide. But Dr. John Olney, who has been studying aspartame's effects on the brain for more than 20 years, disagrees. He is a neuroscientist at Washington University School of Medicine. His new study analyzes U.S. brain cancer data in the years before and since aspartame's approval. There's been a striking increase in the incidence of malignant brain tumors. Dr. Olney does not say flat out that aspartame is responsible for the rise in brain tumors. But he does believe that his analysis of the data shows that it's the most likely suspect because, he says, many researchers have discounted other environmental factors. And, only says, the same types of aggressive brain tumors that showed up in the aspartame animal studies over 20 years ago are now increasing in the American human population. I'm saying that there's enough basis to suspect aspartame that it needs to be reassessed. FDA needs to reassess it and this time around FDA should do it right. Aspartame was discovered in the mid-sixties at G.D. Searle, the Chicago drug company. Searle was bought by Monsanto and then was spun off to form the NutraSweet Kelco company. The FDA originally approved aspartame back in 1974 but FDA investigators soon found serious problems in some of the studies that Searle had submitted to the FDA, and so a task force was organized to investigate many of Searle's tests. There were some very serious deficiencies in the conduct of some of those experiments. Dr. Eric Millstone is a food safety expert at the University of Sussex in England. He's been a critic of Britain's approval of the sweetener for over a decade. He says that Searle's tests in the early 70s were so flawed there is simply no way to be sure that aspartame is safe. Well, for example, a rat died during the course of an experiment, but apparently that rat was not then carefully dissected to see whether there was any evidence that the compound might have killed a rat, and there were many other deficiencies in the conduct of these tests. Uh, Tumours appeared in some of the animals and they were simply cut out and discarded, not reported. There were occasions when antibiotics were administered, but that was not reported. There All of this by G.D. Searle? G.D. Searle and some of the companies working under contract to G.D. Searle. Because the FDA task force found so many discrepancies in Searle's data, in late 75, the agency put the approval on hold before aspartame could hit the market. The FDA commissioner back then called the test at best sloppy and said their investigation revealed a pattern of conduct which compromises the scientific integrity of the studies. According to the FDA themselves, Searle, in making their presentation to the FDA, had willfully misrepresented the facts and had withheld some of the facts that they knew to, would possibly jeopardize the approval of the product. Former Senator Howard Metzenbaum's staff investigated the aspartame approval process. Since he's retired from the Senate, 
He has become chairman of the Consumer Federation of America. The FDA officials themselves were so upset that they sent the file to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago for the purpose of presenting it to the grand jury as to whether or not there should be indictments. It wasn't presented. It was delayed. Samuel Skinner, the U.S. attorney who led the grand jury probe, withdrew from the case while he was in job discussions with Searle's Chicago law firm, Sidley and Austin, the job that he later accepted. The investigation stalled, and the statute of limitations on the aspartame charges ran out. As a result, the investigation was dropped. Skinner denies any responsibility for this. Meanwhile, an FDA field team inspected Searle's labs. Their report was highly critical of the way that Searle conducted key animal feeding studies, saying that the chemical being tested was not properly mixed with the food, thus allowing the rats to eat around the big chunks of the test substance. Dr. Millstone says that the teams which reviewed those Searle studies looked only at their statistical validity and did not examine safety issues. Teams of investigators were given very narrow briefs, very narrow terms of reference, which essentially ensured that they never addressed the most important question. Which was? Were the tests properly conducted? Were the tests honestly reported? And was it possible to be confident that the compound is safe? In 1980, more than five years after the controversy began, questions still remained about aspartame. And so the FDA had two separate panels of experts evaluate the cancer issues. Both panels concluded that the agency should not approve aspartame until more tests were done because of concerns about brain tumors. But in 1981, Dr. Arthur Hall Hayes was appointed as President Reagan's new FDA commissioner. And that commissioner of the FDA overruling three outside scientists and three internal scientists working in the FDA process who said it should not be marketed. That commissioner overruled these people and said, I'm going to let it go on in spite of these rulings. Attorney Jim Turner is a consumer advocate with Citizens for Health. He helped get the FDA to ban cyclamate, another artificial sweetener. He has been challenging the FDA's aspartame approval for over 20 years. The issue is that it did cause brain tumors in animals. The public board of inquiry that was convened by the FDA of outside experts ruled that it should not be marketed until the cancer question was resolved. Two years after Commissioner Hayes approved aspartame for dry products, he approved it for soft drinks, after which use of the sweetener skyrocketed. Hayes left the agency a few months later and took a job with Burson Marsteller, the PR firm for Searle. The so-called revolving door and the FDA's approval process were two issues Senator Metzenbaum asked the General Accounting Office, the GAO, to investigate for his 1987 hearings on aspartame. The GAO did not examine scientific or safety issues, but they found no improprieties with the revolving door issues, and they said the FDA had adequately followed its food additive approval process. The GAO looked into all of that, and they saw nothing wrong with this so-called revolving door. I'm not saying that there was something legally wrong. What may be legally right might be ethically questionable. Some scientists allege that the industry tries to influence research. Dr. Ralph Walton, a professor of psychiatry at Northeastern Ohio University's College of Medicine, recently did a survey of aspartame studies. He found that the results of industry-sponsored research turned out very differently from the non-industry-sponsored studies. I looked at the medical literature addressing the safety of aspartame. I found 164 studies. 74 were funded by the NutraSweet industry. Every single one of them attested to the safety of aspartame. Of the 90 independently funded studies, 83 identified a problem. Then what are you saying? I think it's inappropriate for researchers to have a vested interest in the outcome of their research. When we have evidence that something produces cancer in animals, we'd better pay attention to that evidence. That's a basic tenet of public health. And the question of how much evidence is enough is not a scientific question. It's a policy question. That's what the FDA has to deal with. The FDA says they will carefully consider any future adverse data on aspartame that they find convincing enough 
to warrant investigation. Meantime, NutraSuite is being test marketed in China, a potential market of about a billion people.